let's talk about areas in polar coordinates. So first we should recall the formula for the area of a sector. So what is a sector? A sector is really this thing that kind of looks like a slice of pizza. Okay. So the area of a sector um, that's going to be equal to one half r squared theta. Now, you know, if I look at this, this looks like a slice of pizza. Uh, this theta is what we call the central angle. And this r is our radius, of course. So we want our central angle expressed in terms of radians, just as a quick reminder. Okay, so this is the um, general formula we have that comes from pre-calculus. Okay, so we are going to try to find a formula for the picture that we see on the right over here. So we have some sort of polar curve. That polar curve is r is equal to f of theta. Our region of integration is going to be two different um, angles of theta. So theta equal to a and theta equal to b. And then this uh, region is what we're trying to find the area of. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our basic calculus idea. Namely, first we chop our region up into n equal pieces. So what we're doing is our independent variable is theta, not x. So we have theta, and that's going from a to b. And when we chop that up into n equal pieces, we're going to call each width delta theta, and that's going to be equal to b minus a divided by n. So if you look at this picture at the right bottom side over here, remember, you know, theta is ranging from A to B. And when we chop it up into N equal pieces, you get these equally uh, spaced wedges, angle wedges. Okay. After we've chopped up our region into N equal pieces, we want to approximate a small amount of area. So this is the approximation step. And that small amount of area is what I'm going to call delta A. It's a small change in area. And how do I figure that out? That's where I use my area of a sector formula. It's going to be 1 half. We want to put the radius squared in here. And then we're going to have that central angle, which would be delta theta. So what should we put in for our radius? Well, this time our radius is going to depend on our function, f of theta. And in particular, for this typical uh, sector that we have, we are going to determine our radius by evaluating our function at some point within this, uh, within this little interval. So we're going to call that angle theta sub i star. And that's going to come from the mean value theorem. So we get f of theta sub i star. And that's going to play the role of our radius. OK? So uh, the third thing that we want to do is we want to approximate the total area. And the way that we do that is with something that looks like a Riemann sum. In this case, we're not working with rectangles. We're working with sectors. So our area is approximately equal to the finite sum as i goes from 1 to n of areas of sectors, which we just calculated. So that's going to be 1 half quantity f of theta sub i star, some sample point inside our interval, squared delta theta. Now, to get the actual formula for the area, we are simply going to take a limit. So 
our area is going to be equal to um, the limit as n goes to infinity i goes from 1 to n 1 half quantity f of theta sub i star squared delta theta like so we know that sigma is the greek letter for s delta is the greek letter for d so I can basically rewrite this limit as a integral, that integral of one half uh, f of theta squared d theta. And we're going to be going from a to b. If you wanted to, you could also write this as uh, the integral from a to b of one half r squared d theta, because our f of theta is really the same thing as r, and this is our area. So I am going to highlight this formula. This is something we should know and memorize. And um, all right, everyone, this concludes our video on areas in polar coordinates. We'll look at an example in class later on. Take care, everyone.